Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Adventure Tactics Domian's Tower. This game is a campaign game. I am not going to do the actual full campaign. I'm just going to do a specific scenario from it. Uh, I'm not going to read you the story, so there's not going to be a spoiler there. But if you do watch this, when you do find this in the campaign, you'll somewhat know how it plays out. So if you don't want to see any of that, you probably don't want to watch this. But I am not going to spoil the story, so you don't have to worry about that piece. Now what I've already done is I have leveled up three times before getting to this scenario. So I have level four characters. I'm going to show each one of those to you. Uh, that will be in this setup space. If you feel like you don't want to see that and you just want to see how the game plays, check in the description below or actually in the timestamps. You can click right on the timestamp for the playthrough. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. In Adventure Tactics, you're going to be playing as heroes. The minimum amount you have to, you can play with is three, you can play up to five. I'm going to be playing with four. I like that uh, I get a four different types of heroes. Each scenario will have different objectives and you actually get a bonus objective. If you can try and complete it, you get bonus benefits at the end of the game. So what we're trying to do in this scenario is defeat the Griffin Lord of Ventus. If I can, I also can try and defeat both of the Griffin Matriarchs, which is going to be insane. <laughs> we can see here, here's the Griffin Matriarch. He's going to, for four players, have 40 health. There's two of them. There's all this text about how they work. I'll just show that to you as they become apparent. We also have our Griffin Lord Ventus here. He has 100 health because we're playing as four player. And he also has all these different uh, uh, effects that happen, but we'll go ahead and go through those as we're playing, except for I do want to mention the passive abilities. Since these are always active, I want to ensure that you understand these. So the Griffin Lord takes one less damage for each attack for each wall or obstacle that's adjacent to him. And then Griffin Lord Ventus ignores obstacles and walls when moving. Normally, obstacles cost us two to move through and walls you cannot move through. We also have Rage. Griffin Lord Ventus deals an additional white dive damage with a basic attack once he's at 25, 35, and 50. Uh, uh, I think that's health, uh, depending on hero count, HP, or fewer. Yep. And then we have here Whirling Spear. When Griffin Lord Ventus is at 25, 35, or 50, depending on hero count, uh, we have uh, all heroes who started their turn adjacent to the Griffin Lord actually take white damage. So basically, when he's at 35 health remaining, I'm going to need to make sure I trigger the Whirling Spear and the Rage. And then his behavior here always targets the closest hero. Up here, you're going to see the map, and I will say my map tiles are incredibly bent <laughs> or warped, I should say. I wish that there was something I could do about it. I've, I'm gonna, I've put some textbooks on them. It hasn't really helped. Uh, so I haven't figured that out. I might actually just find a way to make my own map tiles because they don't matter that much. I just need an 8x8 eight eight square. <laughs> uh, but we're going to use them for today. These are where the two griffins are going to be. Now they're on these larger stands. You can see that so they actually take up four squares. Unlike Lord uh, Ventus himself only takes up one. We can start in this area and then it tells you to grab his deck. It actually tells you the exact cards and I love that. So you can find the exact cards. I've shuffled them up. You're going to see, you can see the names are on there. Go ahead and grab them and give them a good shuffle and you are ready to go. Now you're going to hear from everyone who plays this game. The best part is the leveling up system and I cannot agree more. So I'm going to show you my four characters. Each one has leveled up three times. That puts them at a level four. We're starting with our fighter. Now you always, whenever you start the game, you'll grab a starter card with a specific class. So my class is fighter. I grab class features and a passive ability, which you'll see. It tells you how to create your initial deck. I've got two rock toss, two charges, one basic attack. And then you always add three basic attack cards and three basic move cards to it. Then, as you play scenarios and level up, you can grab different ones. So I actually have my fighter has a level one cleric, a level one wizard, and a level one rogue level up. And you can see they all gave her different cards that she can put into her deck. This symbol means that you can actually remove one card from your deck when you do your level up. We have additional health because of these cards. We have additional class features and additional pass passive abilities. You can also level up into elite classes, and you're going to see that on a couple of mine. Actually, the other three are all elites. They're all elite classes. Only my fighter is not. That's because I wanted her to become a champion. To become a champion, you have to be a level one of every type. So the wizard, the rogue, cleric, and fighter before you can actually level up to the champion. So that's my next goal. When she levels up to level five, I'm going to level her up to a champion. 
On her actual card here, you can see she has a total movement of four for her basic move. So if I use a basic move card, that's how much I can move. In this game, you can only move orthogonally, not diagonally. Uh, her range for her basic attack, which is one red die, is a range one. Now, I, if you had seen, with all these different uh, level up cards, we got different class feature cards. The one that I'm actually going to start off with on my class feature space on my board is called Shake It Off. The other three class features, I'm going to go ahead and put them into my deck. I could remove them and choose not to play with them during the scenario, but I think I'm going to use all of them. <laughs> You're going to see that the fighter has the largest deck, and that's, I think, because she has broadened herself with all the different types of classes. Uh, I should say starter classes, essentially. And so another character that I have, my ranger, has a very lean deck. So it's all just dependent upon how you want to build the character, which is so fun, and that's why it's so cool. And there's all these different elite classes, but in order to do an elite class, you have to have certain classes before it. Uh, and so you can kind of determine which way you want to go. You can be multiple different types of elite classes. Oh, I love it. It's so fun. When we jump into the playthrough, I'll explain all of these symbols in more detail. Just know that this is almost like it's in my hand. I can use this as an action. Of course, I can use the top part as a free action, so that means it doesn't even cost us an action to play it. But if, let's say, I wanted to use this bottom part, oh, well, that's also a response. Technically, this card won't take us an action to use, but most of the time, if they don't have those specific symbols on them, uh, the card here that's a class feature you can use, and then once you use it, you put it in your discard pile. On the left-hand side of the board, we have all of our passive abilities. So I actually have a total of four passive abilities, but you can only have three for each encounter, so you'll have to choose one. I decided not to use Guidance. It's great, but you got to decide which one to use. <laughs> we have Blink. Once per turn, you may move one point of movement. Uh, you can move diagonally, which, like I said, normally you can't. Nimble, at the end of your turn, you may move one additional square, which is awesome. And then Tough, she has plus three at maximum HP. Next, you'll want to calculate your health value. So we started with that plus three because we're tough. Three and then the seven from our basic fighter class, that's 10. Plus four is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we have a total of 19 health to start. We have our one here and our nine here. And what's nice is these are bevied in. So they, if they get knocked, they're not going to fall out of there easily. I will tell you that this thing is also really, really bent, though. It might be hard to tell. <laughs> Due to some of the other scenarios we've completed, we also got some armor and some accessories. Technically, I could also have a weapon. These cards, once again, once they're used, they're either placed in your discard pile like this one, or this one since it has that X symbol, we can use this once and then it's removed for the rest of the encounter. Uh, we'll get it back for the next encounter, but it's a one, essentially it's a one time per encounter use. Once again, these are just like they're in our hand. If we want to use them, it takes an action to use them. Generally speaking, response cards don't take actions because you do it in response to something. But what that means is you can't have these out the entire encounter using them over and over again. They're used once and then either placed in the discard pile or removed from the game. If I had a weapon, I could place a weapon here, but I don't have one, so we have that blank for now. When you play your first couple of scenarios with your uh, heroes, you won't have any of this filled out. This will be totally blank. There's also a space here for two dice abilities. You might have an ability that allows you to affect your dice rolls in some way. Our fighter does not have that, so we have left that blank. To finish our setup for our fighter, Roberta, let's go ahead and draw our four cards. So we have a basic move card. I like that. We then have, ooh, we have a target heals, but this is a one-time use. Probably got that when she became a level one cleric. We have, ooh, rock toss, roll a white die, and then push target one square. And then we have one more, ooh, a shank, which is a two blue dice attack. I like it. I think I'm going to keep all four of those. What I could do is mulligan, take all of these, shuffle them back in, and draw four more. But I think I'm going to keep it. Next, we have our leveled up wizard, who's now called the War Mage. <laughs> I love it. He'll now roll a red die for an attack. I think as a wizard, he had that. He has a range of one to four for his basic attack, movement of four. He does have this symbol. And that means whenever our war mage does a basic attack, he can also deal one damage to another target at range two. His war mage class feature that he has here is supernova. It's a one-time use for the encounter. He can heal a blue die worth of health. All other enemies in range take two red dice as damage. That's amazing. Oh, and range is here. That's a range of three. So he starts off essentially with where he is and then within a range of three, th so three squares out all around him, he'll deal that much damage. <laughs> kind of sweet. Since he's a war mage, apparently he doesn't need any weapons, armor, or accessory because I don't have any. <laughs> he actually has the same passives as our fighter, nimble, tough, and blink. He does also have master of destruction, 
Whenever you use an AoE attack, you may exclude one square from receiving damage. That's really cool when you have lots of enemies and you don't want to hit your teammates. But we only have three enemies here, so I'm not worried about that one. I think these are going to be more helpful. It might seem a little bit ridiculous, but our War Mage actually has more health <laughs> than Roberta. And that's because Elwyn has 17 health from his War Mage, plus the Rogue, plus the Fighter, plus his Starter Wizard. And then we add the plus 3 from his Toughness here to put him at a total of 20 health. He does also have this Story Dice ability. At the beginning of every encounter, place a red token on this card. Whenever you roll dice, you may remove one token from this card to roll an additional red die. So I'm just thinking to myself, when I do the Supernova, if I can hit everyone, I could roll three red dice on them. That would be super cool. Let's go ahead and draw his cards. His first one is a Shank as well. Uh, then he also has Make a Basic Move. I think that's good. We have oh exchange positions with another hero in range teleport that could be fun lots of movement and this one whenever your damage reduce that damage by uh this amount that's an arcane shield so he got that as his class feature when he was a wizard i don't actually like that hand very much i'm gonna go ahead and mulligan let's try this again he gets to draw four we have our basic attack card for one we have ignore a basic attack as a response that's cool we have make a basic move for three, and then our final one is make another basic attack for four. Next, we have our paladin. She started as a cleric. She's now leveled up to a paladin. That's an elite class. Rolling a red die for her basic attack, move a four. Her attack is actually a range of one or two. She's got probably a long sword, so to speak. And she has an elite effect that every time she does a basic attack, she can heal for one damage. So cool. I decided to take her Divine Shield. This is a response. When you or another hero in range or damage, reduce that damage by a red die. That's cool. She only has three passive abilities and she has no dice abilities. You may use your healing actions to deal a damage instead. <laughs> so anytime she does a healing, she can actually do it as damage. Plus three maximum HP. And at the end of your turn, you may move to an adjacent or you can move an adjacent hero one square. She also just has one weapon. This is the Wrath Blade. So we can either use it for one red die. Sorry, that's not red. That's a black die at a range of one. Or we can just go ahead and heal ourselves. Our starting health is 5, 10, 15, plus 11, so that's 26. So she has the most, most starting health at 26. Let's draw her four cards. Her first one, ooh, this is a story perk we got. Hustle, make two basic moves. That allows her to move eight. That was amazing. Uh, when you are another hero in range or damage, reduce that damage by a red die. Hmm, that's good. She can help protect some people. Uh, we've got another healing prayer. And then our final one, a basic attack. You know what? I like that. I like that a lot. We'll keep that. So our final character is our ranger. She's the only one that stayed in her basic class of archer. She did archer 1 to archer 2. And then with archer 2, she could do ranger 1. And then she did ranger 2 for her final level up so far. She'll roll now a white and a black die. Before, as the archer, it was just a white die. Range of 2 to 5, so she can't attack adjacent. But she can attack within a range of 2 to 5, which is cool. Movement of 4. I did decide to keep her archer basic class here. She can, for a free action, make a basic move, or she can react when an enemy moves adjacent to you. She can actually make a basic move and sidestep them. Kind of cool. She only has one passive because of this. It's scout. After the initiative order has been set, you may move your hero up or down one spot. She has just armor, so no weapons or accessories. Reduce the damage that you are dealt by one die. You may then make a basic move. thought that would work for her. Goblin feathers, kind of thematic. And so her total health is only 15. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Our ranger's deck is the smallest. It's, a, it's the smallest deck. And the advantage of that is you get to see the cards that you like the most. Because if ever your deck is empty, you just reshuffle. It doesn't do anything. But if you do get knocked out, when you come back, because we do have three revive potions as a four-player game, you're going to have to lose four cards from your deck. And here's the thing. If you don't have enough, four, uh, enough cards to remove, then you actually can't come back. So that makes her a little bit riskier because of that so i'm hoping to keep her out of range i mean she can attack at range of five so hopefully hopefully that'll work okay her first card is a basic move oh boy another basic move i want some attacks okay there's a basic attack but i, I want something good it will point blank shot two black dice awesome now the thing about black dice they're the ones that can give you the most damage but they also have you know like a one hit side too so they're random which makes the most sense when you're thinking of a, a long range attack you might totally hammer them or you might totally miss them but because of that i do think i'm going to keep this hand and you know what you guys i forgot i just purchased the wagon at the beginning of each encounter every hero draws one additional card so i'm going to go ahead and do that now quick 
Our fighter drew the make basic attack, and our ranger picked the make a basic move. Our paladin grabbed the fighter shake it off, and our uh, war mage grabbed the shake. We also earned this Child of Destiny card from a previous encounter. I'm going to go ahead and give this to our War Mage. Once per encounter, that War Mage will be able to reroll one die. Now let's go ahead and finish setting up. So what we have here are all six of the initiative tokens that we need. One for each of our players, plus two for the enemies. We have our uh, thing here that if ever we need a random direction, we have a random direction deck. and We just need to know which way north is pointing, so I'm going to have north pointing straight up. With these, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle them and reveal them, and that's going to tell us our initiative order. Don't forget, our ranger could move forward or backward if she wants one space. Let's see who's going to go first. We have the enemies are going to go first. Is that a good thing? I don't know. And then Olet is going to go second, and I could have her jump up to first, but I might not want that because I kind of want them to get closer to us. Uh, next will be Quill. Then it will be Roberta. Uh, then it will be, oh, it will be Elwyn. So that means the enemies are going to go first and last. With this, I think we're all set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead and start by drawing an enemy card for the Griffins and the Griffin Lord. Since the enemies get to go first, we're going to go ahead and draw the top card of their deck. And we have a birdhouse in your soul. <laughs> Every Griffin Matriarch moves, makes a basic attack, and uses any remaining, remaining movement to move away from the attack's target. Then Ventus moves and makes a basic attack. The Matriarchs can only move, oh yeah, eight. <laughs> They're going to have eight total movement. Uh, the range is one though, so they have to get within range one of us to be able to attack. And I don't know if I showed you this, I think I might have missed this. It does say here that they ignore obstacles and walls when moving. Not when attacking, though, but when moving. So they can go over walls and obstacles, and that obstacle doesn't take an additional movement. Ventus here attacks at a range of two, not one or two, but just two, uh, and moves a total of four. Now what you do with these large based characters is whenever you move them, you shrink them down to one square, and then you count from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go ahead and put their uh, standee in a spot that's at least containing that space. So we'll do the same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're both not going to be able to get in, uh, in range to attack. And then he's going to move one, two, three, four. So he'll move to here. No one is within range two. So they basically just moved up for us, which is perfect because that means we're going to be able to attack them. So that was the enemy turn. Now, and remember, we could have had Olette actually go first. She could have moved herself up there due to her scout. But I didn't want her to go first because I wanted them to get closer. And I'm glad they did that. It'll make it easier for her to attack. I think I'm going to go for the objective where I defeat both the Griffins and I defeat the boss if I can. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is actually use my sidestep to start with. You see that symbol up here? That means this is going to be free. It doesn't take one of my two actions. You can take two actions per turn. I do also want to mention I can always discard any card that I have out on the board or in my hand to get half of my basic movement for an action. But this here, I'm going to get a basic move. My basic movement is four. So I'm going to be able to do that for free. But before I do that, I am going to do my first action, which is not going to be that one. I'm going to do the basic attack action. So my basic attack is one white and one red. I can do it at a range of two to five. And then after that attack, I'm going to do a free basic move. And then we're going to do a point blank shot. You have to do this within range one, which is why I'm doing this. And I'm going to do two black dice on that griffin. I'm just going to hammer him. This is going to be fun. So first, uh, just to make sure to recap, first thing is we're doing the basic attack. Then we'll do the free move. And then we'll do the point blank shot. Now, all of that then will go into my discard pile. We currently have a range attack up to five. Well, if we look here, one, two, three, we can definitely hit this griffin. Now, whenever you're doing range, you can always attack diagonally. So technically, one, two, three, four, this one's in range as well. But what I want to do is hit this guy first, then move up to him and attack him a second time. So I'll roll those dice, attack, and then just because I'm here, I'm going to move myself up two spaces and do the point blank shot at him. Remember, they have a total of 40 health. There are four different colored dice in this game. The white are the weakest. Blue and red are pretty standard. And then the black ones are you can do a lot of damage or no damage at all. So what we're rolling for this first attack with our basic attack, that's one black and one white. So we're going to grab both of these dice and give them a roll. How much are we going to do? <laughs> so we have one, two, three, four, five here, plus three here. That's eight, eight total damage. And then after that roll of eight, we also do our point blank shot, which is two black dice. So I'll grab two more black dice. We'll roll them up. Oh man, five plus two is seven. 
And actually, I'm wrong. That's a six, two, four, six, seven, eight. So we just did 16 points of damage. That's almost half the health of that griffin already with that two attacks. But now that means these three cards that we've played, we're going to discard all three. What's nice is in the book itself, it has a place for you to track damage. So you don't have to track the damage on the board itself. That was the Griffin Matriarch 2. So we just dealt 16 out of the 40 health. Our Paladin is next. And I think what we're going to do is start with making two basic moves. And then after playing that, we'll just do our basic attack card as well. So that's our two actions for her. If you look at her card, her basic move is four. So technically we can move eight, which is pretty insane. And then we can attack with one red die at a range of one to two. We could do all this fancy footwork, but as a paladin, we're not worried about that. We're just gonna move here. That's a total of three. Uh, then what we can do is attack that griffin as well. Remember that she has her passive as well. She could heal by one, but she's already at full health. Okay, she just dealt four more damage to him. That's 20 damage out of the 40. He's at half health. Roberta's next, and I think we're going to try and take out that griffin if we can, at all possible. I don't know if we are. <laughs> what we're going to do is do a, a move, a basic move, and then we're going to shank him. We're going to roll two blue dice on him, see if maybe, when we have to be within range one, see how much damage we can do to him. Let me take a quick moment to explain line of sight here. In this game, line of sight, your allies do not block line of sight, but enemies block line of sight. And that's the same for enemies. Enemies can shoot and move through other enemies, but they cannot shoot or move through uh, uh, enemies, uh, their enemies, so our allies. So we can move one, two, three, four right here. We are diagonally adjacent to this guy. Let's shank him. I just wanted to remind you that uh, Roberta's total movement is four. That's how she can move four. The shank tells us how many dice to roll. It's not a basic attack, so we're not rolling the red die. We're just rolling two blue dice. Oh, we just did one, two, three, four, plus five damage. That's nine damage. That means we've done 29 damage. He only has 11 health left. Our war mage is last to go. And just so you can see, one, two, three, four. He's at a range of four. It's corner to corner for light of sight, so he can totally see him, even though we've got this big boss standing right next to him. He needs to do 11 points of damage to take that out. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we're going to try it. He's going to go ahead. He's got two basic attack cards. He's going to go ahead and use them. Now, he does not have anyone within range two, which is a bummer. So he can't hit, you know, how he has with his elite class. He has another character or enemy within range two. He can just deal two damage to it. He's not going to be able to do that with this basic attack. But I still think it's worth it because if we can get rid of one of these birds, when they activate, only one of us will be, or one of them will be harrowing us. We're also going to go ahead and use the Adrenaline Rush here, removing this counter. That means we can roll one additional red die for one of our attacks. So I'm rolling two red dice for one attack and one red die for the second one. Let's see what we get. Oh, <laughs> four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Beautiful. We just took out that Griffin. <laughs> that was amazing. We're then going to use our Nimble Passive here. At the end of our turn, we can move one additional square. It took a bunch of our resources, but taking this guy out, I think will be worth it. Let's remove him from the board. We'll have our wizard go ahead and move one space this way. Not that I don't know if that's really going to help, but <laughs> slowly getting himself over to this side. Now, after all of our heroes have gone, though, we do have the enemy turn. We'll draw our top card and we have sweeping strikes. Every Griffin Matriarch moves, makes a basic attack, and then moves as many remaining spaces away. So they're going to run out of range. And then Ventress uses the leaping dive on a hero with range. Let's start with the Griffin. What the Griffin will do is I'm going to remove him from the board to make this easier to see. He's going to move one here, and then he's going to attack Roberta. Then he can move two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way over here. We're going to place him over here. This is why I felt like it was important to take out the other one because both of them would have done this. Uh, so he's going to roll one red die for his attack plus a white die because we're playing with four heroes. Nothing else here matters. Let's go ahead and roll. One red and one white and we get a total of four damage. That's not terrible and not great. We're going to go one, two, three, four. We're down to 15 health. Lord Ventus now though is going to use Leaping Dive. He's going to roll a blue and a white. It's a range, I think that's saying range up to five ignores obstacles and walls. We don't have to worry about that. He hasn't put any out. Uh, he moves adjacent to the target. All heroes adjacent to Griffin, Lord, Ventus, or the target takes white damage. Add a number of obstacles equal to the number of heroes in unoccupied squares adjacent to Griffin, Lord, Ventus. And if ever you're placing an obstacle in a location that already has an obstacle, it's going to make a wall. You can see that down here, which is kind of cool how this works. 
if an obstacle is generated on top of an obstacle, it becomes a wall. Obstacle squares have 1 HP and can be attacked. Wall squares have 2 HP and can be attacked. If a wall square takes 1 damage, it gets downgraded to an obstacle. And these are what they look like. Obstacles don't bl block line of sight. Walls do. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to do this right, but I think this is how it works. Since he's already close to Roberta, he's not going to move because he is targeting the closest hero. He's right in front of her. He's going to attack Roberta. Roberta's going to get hit for a blue and a white die. But Quill over there is also going to get hit by a white die. And then we're going to place out only one obstacle. So I think I'm going to put that obstacle right here because there's only one character that's adjacent to him. That'll change as we're trying to take him out. <laughs> but so let's do Roberta first. She's going to get hit by a white die and then a blue and a white die. Oh boy. Here's the white die attack only for two. So two damage and then the blue and the white die. That's six. So it's a total of eight damage. So I do think it's a good time to do this. We're going to play Divine Shield. When you or another hero in range are damaged, reduce that damage by a red die. So let's go ahead and roll a red die to reduce that damage. We reduced it by three. So she would have taken eight damage. She's now only taking five damage. Five damage will put her right down to 10 health already. <laughs> yeah, this could go quick. This card will then be placed in our Paladin's discard pile. Our Paladin is also going to take a white damage. That's two. That's going to put her from 26 down to 24. We've now all activated. Let's move to cleanup. We can all choose to discard one card that's in our hand. Here we have our wizard, our cleric, we have our ranger, and then we have our fighter here. Three out of four of us have discarded a single card. That's the most that you can discard during this cleanup phase. And then we'll all draw back up to a four. Our paladin is the only one that kept three. Let's go ahead and redraw. We've drawn up all of our cards. We've got a nice ignore a basic attack for our uh, fighter. Thank goodness. A fireball for her as well. We've got two fireballs for our war mage. We've got to make up to three basic attacks against different cart targets. That's cool. And we have this divine flames, a blue die, and the target is weakened. Cool. Okay, let's start the next round. That's by taking the initiative tokens and shuffling them up. Let's draw from the top of our initiative stack. We have Alette going first, followed by the enemy, followed by our wizard Elvin, followed by the enemy again, followed by Roberta, and finally would be our paladin. Okay, uh, I think, I think actually, yeah, because I... This will get the griffin closer to us if we let the enemy activate first, assuming the griffin activates. I think all of the ones will activate the griffin. We'll find out. But so I think I'm actually going to have her... Yeah, I think I'm just going to have her move her back, actually, which would be nice. It can move up or down one spot. Let's go ahead and flip over our card, and we have the birdhouse in your soul. Every griffin matriarch moves and makes a basic attack and uses any remaining movement to move away, just like normal. And Ventus just moves and makes a basic attack. The griffin can move a total of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ignoring obstacles, eight, ignoring obstacles and walls can go ahead and be placed there. Now, when there's multiple targets, we can choose who it's going to target. Let's go ahead and have it attack the paladin. Our paladin is getting hit for a red and a white. Let's see. Oh my gosh, that's six damage. Yeah, I definitely think she's going to do it. She has this with her. When you or another hero in range, which that range is zero through five, or damaged, reduce that damage by a red die. Let's see. Oh, three. So she just took three damage. That will put her from 24 down to 21. Roberta is then getting hammered by a blue die from Ventus. Let's see what she gets. That's a uh, five damage. And I feel like it's a great time to use our rogue's parry here to ignore a basic attack. Take that. No damage. Olette is next to go. And if you look from the back corner here to the corner over here, I would say she's not being blocked by the griffin. So she's going to use that card that allows her to do three basic attacks. But there's only two characters here for her to attack. She's going to attack both of them with that card. And then she's going to move. Let's do the griffin first. We'll roll these up. <laughs> That's... A total of nine damage there. And then against the Lord, let's see. He only gets uh, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and nine damage respectively. I will take that. I'm realizing I needed to be at least two spaces away from these characters to do that uh, ranged attack. So I'm going to say I did the movement first. I'm going to move one, two, three, four. So I'm back here. But then I definitely have line of sight to both of them to do that attack. So Lord Ventus has eight damage and that Griffin has nine damage. Eight damage out of 100 and nine damage out of 40. 
Next to go is our War Mage, and I think the first thing we're going to do is this basic move. We're going to move four spaces, and remember, we can blink, so once per turn we can move diagonally. So we're going to move one, two, three, four. We're going to move ourselves right here. Ah, oh, you can hardly see me. That's because I now want to throw this fireball. It has to be within range one to four. I'm going to go ahead and target here. You can target a location where there's no enemies, and then a range one for that area attack means that whole area right here is going to take damage. That means this obstacle, as long as we take one damage, we can remove that obstacle. It's going to hit the griffin, and it's going to hit the big guy for one awesome attack. I love that. Let's go ahead and roll one blue die. Four damage to both of them. That means we did 12 and 13 damage respectively. And I'm going to remove this obstacle. I believe that that's how it works. Now something I should mention with this obstacle. Since Ventus was next to it from before, he should have taken one less damage because of that. But I think, I, you know, and this is where it's hard. He's on top of that obstacle. Could uh, our ranger have attacked it? I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to leave the damage the way it was because that would mean our ranger would have attacked that obstacle, dealt at least one damage because all dice have at least one damage on it. And so then he, we could have attacked that first before attacking him last time. So I'm going to keep everything the way it is and remove this obstacle. It is now the enemy's turn again, and you know this guy's going to attack and run away. Let's go ahead and flip his card, and we have Carpet Bomb. That doesn't sound good. Ventus uses bombs away. Ventus moves towards his starting square. Ventus moves and makes a basic attack. Huh. So first, he does the bombs away. Then he starts moving towards the square. Then he moves and makes a basic attack. Okay, that's kind of weird. Every Griffin Matriarch moves, makes a basic attack, and then runs away, just like normal. Bombs away states can be used if at least one Griffin Matriarch is undefeated. Yes, we've got one out there. Affects the three side-by-side -side columns that have the most heroes in them. And then it says here, if no Griffin Matriarch is undefeated, then he just uses the Leaping Dive, but there is one already defeated. And then it says, otherwise, you place him at the starting position. So I think what happens is he's going to go ahead and target three columns, do the two red damage, and then he's just going to do a basic attack on top of that. <laughs> oh, man. And then, of course, the Griffin itself is going to attack and run away. So I believe what he does is he attacks three columns, and it's going to be all three of these. The wizard's the only one that's not going to get hit by the two red dice. Then he's going to attack Roberto with a regular uh, basic attack. <laughs> Here's the two red for that attack. Oh my gosh, that's seven damage. Well, I'm going to have both our fighter and our paladin play these two cards. They're both one time. We have to remove them for the rest of the scenario. When you are damaged, we get to heal that amount of red health. So I'm going to put those to the side, and I'll roll this up. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! One, two, three, four, five. So they only took four, five, six, seven, uh, and then five they heal. So only two damage for them. Oh my gosh, that's going to put the Paladin down to a straight 20. Roberta is going to go down to 8. Unfortunately, our Ranger takes the full uh, 7 damage. So that's going to put him down or her down to 7 health. I should mention we could do that because it's a reaction. So we can do that when something happens, when you're damaged. So that's why we were able to play those. Then we're going to have a blue die attack our fighter. And that's for 4 damage. Oh my gosh, she's at 8 uh, one, two, three, four. She's down to four health. And then we're going to have a blue and a white die attack our paladin. And that's for five, six damage. That puts her down to 14. And then that griffin's going to fly away. Boy, that was brutal. The griffin will move eight away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Way over here. I think I can put any part of them so I won't put them so far away. There we go. Okay, now next is Roberta who is definitely injured. The two cards she's going to play this turn, she's going to use this. She has a target. She's going to target herself. She's going to heal up by two white dice, but then this card's gone for the rest of the, of the scenario. And then she's going to do a basic attack on Lord Ventus. A two white dice heal. Boy, that's a six heal. That's amazing. That'll put her from four health back up to 10 health. Thank goodness. And then she'll just do one red die of damage, and she deals four damage to Lord Ventus. That'll put him at 16 damage in total. Okay, so now final to go will be our Paladin, Quill. Quill only has two cards in her hand. She wishes they were better. She likes this Weakened, but I think what she's going to do is discard the Weakened just so she gets a basic move of two. Because remember, her normal movement is four divided in half. And then she can use this Healing Prayer. Now, she can either use that to heal Roberta or she could use it as an attack now let's heal Roberta. I think it's worth healing Roberta. So we'll move her in one space here. 
Actually, I might do two because she's a little bit better at defending. Uh, well, she just has more health, and Roberta will be right here. She's still uh, adjacent to her, so she can heal her. Two white dice for the heal. That's four healing. That puts her up to 14 health. We'll now move to that cleanup phase. No one has any conditions. If anyone had conditions, what we'd have to do now is get rid of all of them. Instead, we're going to all discard one card. I think the only one that's going to discard one is our Ranger. Alette doesn't need all that movement. She's going to discard one of those. You can see our Paladin used all of her cards. We only have one here for our Fighter. Let's go ahead and draw back up. Well, it's looking pretty good. We still have a Fireball over here. We have some quick shots by our Ranger. Our Ranger is really our damage dealer. Our War Mage will be, I think, as he keeps leveling up. Uh, he does have a Fireball. He has a basic attack. Let's go ahead and draw Initiative Tokens. Our first initiative token will be our enemies again. Haven't they gone first every turn? Next is the enemies a second time. Okay, then it's Alette. Then it will be Roberta. Then it would be a Quill. And we'll end it with the wizard. So we're definitely going to have Alette go in between. Because that means the griffin will be one step closer. Or will actually be in range for Alette to be able to attack. We'll draw our enemy card. And we have sweeping strikes. The Gryffindor Matrix moves, makes a basic attack, and then tries to move away. And Ventus will use Leaping Dive. We'll have this bird move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. And then he can actually attack either one, I think, since his wizard has not been hit yet. Let's go ahead and have the wizard get attacked by him. One red. Oh, I might have rolled a blue one at the time. Sorry, guys. One red and one white for this attack. Let's see how much damage we're looking at. Wow, that's a lot of damage. That's seven damage, I think. Yeah, I think it's a good time. We'll use our ignore basic attack. We'll do our parry response. Then we have our leaping dive by Ventus. Ignores obstacles. That doesn't matter. All, all heroes adjacent to Griffin Lord Ventus or the target takes one damage. We're going to have him attack the Paladin because both the Paladin and Roberta are next to each other, are adjacent to him. And you always get to decide whenever there's a tie. Add a number of obstacles equal to the number of heroes unoccupied squares adjacent to Griffin Lord. So that's two. So we're going to be placing two obstacles. And I think we're good there. We've placed our two obstacles here. Remember, they do not block line of sight, but they will make movement harder, and we can target them with a one damage attack at least, and I'll get rid of them. Uh, we're going to have the Paladin getting hit for one blue and one white, and then Roberta just one white. We'll do the white on Roberta. That's three damage. That puts her from 14 down to an 11. And then the blue and the white for our Paladin. That's only four damage. It's actually not bad. She is at... 14 so i'll put her down to 10. our ranger is next to go she's going to go ahead and do a volley attack and this is awesome blue die range of one to five and it is a, whatever we call this an area of effect so she's going to be able to destroy those obstacles which means <laughs> you know who isn't going to be able to uh, reduce his damage then we're going to also make up to two basic attacks targeting different targets. You know which two we're going to do. But I did forget to talk about slowed. What slowed means is you can only ever use one movement point for your next activation. So that griffin isn't going to be able to run away from us. Beautiful. The sad thing about the area of effect, though, is we are going to hit Roberta, but it's totally worth it. We're going to go here. Oh, are we going to hit our wizard then, too? If we do here... We're going to hit, uh, yeah, let's hit the wizard. The wizard's at full health, essentially. So we're going to go here and hit everything in this area with one blue die. We're guaranteed to hit, so let's get rid of the two obstacles. They're not going to do anything. But then we're hitting all of these guys for one blue die, and they're all slowed, so they can all only use one movement for their next activation. Let's do the area of effect attack first. Okay, five damage. <laughs> Ouch. That'll put our wizard down to 15. And Roberta is going to go down to 6. And I'll figure out the enemies in a second. I'm going to add that 5 to what we do with this attack. So our basic attack is 1 black and 1 white. Let's attack Ventus first. And he takes a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage. Beautiful. And then for the griffin, come on, I want to see even more than that. No, uh, 2, 4, 6, 7. Same, same thing, 7 damage. That was 12 damage to each one of those. Wow, that was amazing. So the Griffin has 25 damage, only has 15 health left, and then we've taken him out. Lord Ventus here has 10, 25, 26, 20, 28. Still more than 35 health where he starts rolling an additional white die for his attacks. And we have to take white dice as damage if we start our turn adjacent to him. But we are definitely, what, maybe a third of the way done through him? I love it. All right, Griffin Lord, do your worst. <laughs> or maybe not. Sweeping strikes. Every Griffin Matriarch moves. They can only move one space. 
Make a basic attack and then try and move away, and Ventus uses the Leaping Dive on a hero in range. We'll have this Griffin attack our wizard and then take one step back, and then Lord Ventus here is going to attack Roberta. That's also going to hit the Paladin with just one white die uh, for the Leaping Dive. And that means we're going to add two more obstacles here and here. Here's the red and white die against the wizard. And whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight damage. He's at 15 health now. That's going to put him down to seven health. Ouch. Okay, then we're going to have just the white die hit the paladin. Uh, only one damage. So she'll go from 10 health down to nine. And then we'll have a blue die. Yep, just the blue die for the fighter. And that's three damage. So she'll go from six down to three health. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to lose some people, I think, soon. Quill is going to go next. We're going to use our Wrath Blade, actually, to heal with a white die, and then use our Healing Prayer, and we're going to heal ourselves for two. But these are our two actions, and I should say two dice. So I'm rolling three white dice for healing. Three, six, seven. So right now, we're at a total of nine. Nine plus seven, that puts us back to 16 health. This one will just get discarded, but this one will be removed from the game because of the X. Finally, our wizard is going to activate. First thing he's going to do is heal by a blue die uh, using this. Okay, he healed by four. So he was at seven. Now he's at 11 health. Ooh, that's a little bit better. And then he's going to deal damage at uh, three range. Uh, to red, two red dice to all enemies that are in that range. And then he's going to use his dagger throw on that griffin. I don't know if I'm right or not, but I'm totally going to say that that only hits enemies, not everyone, because it does specifically say all other enemies. And range three, think of this as range one, this is range two, so anything here is range one, anything in this area is range two, and then anything in this area is range three. <laughs> he's hitting both of them for two red dice, then he's going to do the dagger throw on this guy. And actually, I'm wondering, you know, instead of the dagger throw, because we have that cool ability where, and we have everyone within range two, let's just do the basic attack. Because if we do the basic attack, we still get to roll a red die, uh, but then at a range of one through four. But then because of this, we can deal two damage to someone else uh, that's within range two because we're the war mage. So let's first do the two red dice that's going to be applied to both of them. Then let's do the main red die attack on the griffin, and then the griffin lord will just take two damage, and I'll do that now so I don't forget. That means our griffin lord has 30 damage right now, just with that two. All right, let's roll the two red dice, and then the one red die just on the griffin. So let's roll the two red dice that's going to hit both of them. Oh my gosh, four, eight. That's eight damage to both of them, and then just on the griffin, we'll roll three more damage. That griffin is almost toast. 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38 has 40 health. We just need to do two more points of damage. The Ventus is 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. 38 damage. We're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> okay, that's going to end this round. Let's go ahead and draw up for a cleanup. Everyone now is no longer slowed. We have discarded that at the cleanup phase. Let's go ahead and draw cards for the next round. You know, before we do that, I'm realizing I totally skipped Roberta's turn. <laughs> what a jerk. Uh, I definitely think I'm going to do something. I've got to look at the board. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to play my basic move to start off with. And remember, I can blink, so I can move one space diagonally for one of my moves. I'm going to move here for one, two, three, four. I'm right here. Then what I can do is just do a simple basic attack on this uh, griffin and hopefully kill it. And the next round, I've got that fireball to help us with any of the obstacles that he places out. A basic attack is one red die. Two damage is exactly what we needed. That griffin is gone. No more griffins means happy group of heroes. <laughs> now it's all on Lord Ventus. Here we have our cards in our hand. I'm going to go ahead and keep all of these down here for our, our war mage and our fighter. But for our paladin, we're going to discard a move. And also for our ranger, we're going to discard a move. Let's draw up to four. We've drawn up. Look at this. I got my point blank shot again for my ranger because we already had to shuffle. They're the, that's the only one that's had to shuffle because her deck is so small. Okay, let's go ahead and do the initiative tokens. Let's draw our top one. And we have Olette because apparently she always seems to go first. And then we have Quill. And then we have Roberta. Oh my gosh. And then we have an enemy. And then we have um, Elwyn. And then we have the enemy again then. Sweet. So let's start with Olette. Well, it's a little bit risky because we're going to get adjacent to him, but let's use our basic move of four so we can do that point blank attack of two black dice. One, two. That does mean, though, that we're adjacent to him. 
Yeah, which we know with his leaping dive can be bad. But two black dice, I just want to kill him. Let's see a ton of damage. This is a point blank shot. Okay, we've got two, four, six, seven, eight. I'll take eight damage. That puts him at 46 damage. I like it. So then I think the next thing we're going to do, a uh, quill is next. Let's go ahead and do a basic attack here. Now with that basic attack, we can heal by one. So that's going to put us up to 17 health. And then let's go ahead and move away from him just because that way we don't have too many people adjacent to him. So I'm going to move one, just, just one space away. That should work. But first let's do that basic attack of one red. 46 plus five is 51 damage. Beautiful. Roberta is next. She's within range two here. So I think using both her dagger throw, which has a range of one to four and her rock toss, which is range one to four to be able to attack him. However, with that rock toss, it says, and push one square. So although we push the paladin away, I think maybe it will put him next to the paladin. The paladin can take the damage, uh, but then he's only adjacent to one character anyways. And we're going to roll one red and one white die against him. He's at 51 damage. Let's add to that. Ooh, four, five, six, seven. He's at 58 damage now. Don't forget, at 65 damage, he's going to add a white die to his attacks, and anyone who's adjacent to him, when he activates, is going to take a white die for damage. He has Lancer. He moves and makes a basic attack, and then he uses Leaping Dive on a hero in range. Oh, he's going to do both of those to our Paladin. Ouch. We have one blue for the basic attack and a blue and a white for the leaping dive. And we're going to have to place an obstacle. Oh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight damage. She's at a total of 16 health, so she'll go down to eight health. So she's still alive and kicking. And he's also going to place an obstacle down, which as we know what obstacles do, they prevent damage on him. Next to go is our wizard. And I think we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're first going to chuck a dagger at him, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to exchange positions with another hero that's in range one to eight. So we're going to change with that paladin so the paladin doesn't die because then we're going to drop a fireball for the second attack. Because remember that teleport has that star symbol. So what that means is it was a free action. And then when we get attacked, we can actually use this to reduce our damage. And you know what? We're going to change one thing of this. We're actually going to do the fireball first. The reason being the paladin's going to get hit, but then we can get rid of that um, obstacle. And so that way we're hitting him for full damage. So fireball first, then we'll do the dagger second, and then we'll go ahead and teleport and exchange positions with the paladin. The blue die, we're going to do damage to the paladin as well. And then the red die is only to the boss. He's at 58 damage. Let's give him a roll. Okay, that's another three damage to the paladin. So the paladin goes down to five health, but we have a total of four, seven more damage. 58 plus seven is exactly 65. He has 35 health left. Because of that, now he is going to roll an additional white die when he attacks with his basic attack. And because of all that, we're going to go ahead and have our war mage use nimble. At the end of your turn, you may move one additional square. We've destroyed that obstacle with the fireball attack. We'll go ahead and move him one space over here. Now it is whenever you start your turn adjacent to him, you have to roll a white die for damage. However, he's going to go next. Uh, and then if he's adjacent to someone, which likely he's going to be, that person's going to take a white die when they activate. Let's go ahead and flip his card. And he has a Lancer. He's going to, oh, we saw this again, moves and make a basic attack and then do the leaping dive. As weird as it sounds, let's go ahead and have him move next to the wizard. <laughs> That's what I want him to do. And then he'll go ahead and attack the wizard. Our war mage has 11 health left. Let's see when he wants to use this arcane shield. First attack, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We'll roll a white die and reduce that attack by four. That means you only take two damage. So we'll go down to nine health. That's not terrible. This second one, this could be bad. <laughs> uh, only four. Four damage. We'll go from nine health down to five health. Beautiful. He, of course, will also place an obstacle adjacent to him. That means he will reduce damage by one till we get rid of that. Here's what we have left for the cleanup phase. Just these cards. Let's go ahead and draw up. Our wizard has none, so we'll draw up to four. Everyone else will draw two. Oh, I could discard. Yeah, you know, healing. Do I... No, I'm going to leave it. Let's draw up to four. We're all set and ready to go. I've got some basic attacks for my War Mage. That's great. I've got some healing that I could turn into damage if I want. I've got some attacks here. I've got a basic. That's beautiful. Uh, make three basic attacks. I can get rid of that obstacle. Uh, I've got a fireball that can help me get rid of an obstacle. Yeah, and so all this range attack is really helping me with those obstacles. Let's draw my uh, or the initiative tokens. 
let's go ahead and flip our initiative tokens. We have Olette again. She's always first. We have uh, Elwyn for second. We have Quill for third. We have an enemy for fourth. We have an enemy for fifth. And Roberta pulling up the rear. All that is definitely going to do the barrage followed by the basic attack. The barrage, we can make up to three basic attacks with different targets. I'm not even going to roll for that obstacle. We've removed the obstacle with one roll. Well, here, I'll go ahead and roll. Beautiful. Obstacle's removed. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack him uh, with uh, one black and one white. That is my basic attack. Let's see how much we do. Whoa. Two, four, six, seven, eight damage for that one. And then a basic attack here. I've got another black and white here. That's two, four, six, seven, eight. We just did 16 damage to him. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a total of 86 damage on this guy. <laughs> Okay, so now who's next? We have our wizard going next. He's first going to have to roll a white die to take damage. Let's roll our one white die for damage. We took two damage, so we'll go down from five health to three. Now let's roll our red dice for our first attack. Come on, we're looking for as much as we can get here. Four damage. Okay, so four damage to him. Let's do our second action to be another attack. Come on, that's only three. Once per encounter, we can re-roll one die. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to see more than a three here. That's a four. Okay, we'll take that. So we just dealt eight damage to him. That means he has a total of 94 damage. What do you say we take him out with some healing, huh? <laughs> Quill's going to go next. She's going to use this card as a free action to make a basic move. She can move four. One, two, three. She's going to come right up to him. Then she's going to play this one. She's going to target him and heal him, except for she can use all of her heals as damage. A white die plus one. Then for our second action, we're going to play this one and roll two white dice. This is removed from the game. Uh, but then he will take damage equal to two white dice. We need six damage. We already have one from the plus one there. I'm rolling three white dice. Three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. He is done. What happens after you complete a scenario is you're going to turn to the next page. Now, if you don't want to see any spoilers, stop here. Uh, and I'm still not 100% sure I did the cover right, you guys. I don't know if when I'm destroying the obstacles at the same time, does he still get the cover from it? I'm saying no, because how could you get cover from something I'm blowing up, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and turn this page. Don't look if you don't want to see it. We have a partial success here. That would have been if we only took out Lord Ventus. If, or since, we took out Lord Ventus and the Griffins, we'd have the success plus, and we'd get additional benefits for that. We also have a failure, and you continue moving on with the story. Now, I'm not going to do all of this, but this will tell you all the different things you get to gain. This tells you you get to level up a level, so then we get to see, finally we get to see our champion. Actually, I want to pull out the champion card just because I want to see it. So you can see here the champion now has a movement of five, can attack even range. Her attack now is not just a red die, it's a blue and a white die. She gets plus seven health. She gets a new class feature called Touch of Destiny, a passive of a champion's fervor. But she had to have a fighter one, rogue one, cleric one, wizard one, archer one. So it took a lot to be able to do that right one two three four level ups this is her fifth to finally get an elite class <laughs> totally cool but yeah that's the really fun part of this game I hope you guys enjoyed the playthrough. Hope it lets you see if you might want to play this. I would say that seven years old and higher totally can play this. My son really likes it. I'm actually just going to reset this game so I can play from the beginning with him. I just did one one single scenario and he loved the idea of leveling up. Uh, I will say the component quality, it's all over the place. There's certain things that are great and certain things that are terrible. These, these tiles are horrendous and the uh, the player boards are so incredibly bent, it's ridiculous. I have not seen one that's this bad. But the minis are pretty dang solid. The cards are good. I love the art. The gameplay is fun. So yeah, it's it's worth it to me. <laughs> um, I was actually, I didn't even back this game. I got it uh, from uh, my FLGS. So you definitely can get it in other places. Is it worth the price? I kind of think so. I think with the game that you're going to get out of this, and you can do so many different things, there's an expansion for different uh, hero sets that you can play. I Yeah, I'm going to be playing this for a while. I'll tell you that. This will be one that I'm going to keep in my collection. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next stop.